Is it, y'all watch this right now? You can make 100K, 200K, 300K in a month. You know, when I think about it, it was nobody that I could look back in my community that was an example of what was even possible. We don't know how far back we've been programmed. Being in Baltimore growing up, seeing people get shot, you know what I mean, seeing people use the drugs, just seeing the, the environment around you. A lot of people uh, cut corners, want to do shortcuts. A lot of it's just with the wrong mindset. Welcome to another episode of the Honor Pursuit Podcast. We interview six, seven, eight, even nine figure earners. And I don't want to say we're the number one podcast on business and um, entrepreneurship, but we're definitely one that really matters. For sure. Touching entrepreneurs that y'all don't know. Y'all are discovering entrepreneurs that you should know. And in today's episode, I got Mr. SBS. Hailing all the way from Baltimore. I don't think he's going back to Baltimore, no. <laughs> After this, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Welcome to the podcast, bro. My God. You know what I'm saying? So Blessed to be here, man. Appreciate you. What's the SBS stand for, for those that don't know? Uh, man, SBS stand for struggle before success. I mean, that's just the mantra, bro. Yeah. Grew up in Baltimore. So um, that was my life. And so I, I felt like it resonated with so many people um, because so many people are in struggle and don't really feel like they can be successful. Yeah. So I just wanted to kind of let people know it can happen for you because it happened for me. So what did that actually mean, man? Because I think it's also perspective, right? Because some people may not even realize that they actually in the struggle. That's true. But another way that you could look at it is you have to struggle to get to success. You have to. So what, what were some of the things that you had to actually struggle to to get to where you are now? Sure, man. So I, uh, I grew up in Baltimore. Uh, both my mom and dad worked, you know, full-time jobs. So my mom was a nursing assistant by background. You know, my dad was a, a, sanita a sanitation worker, right? So for me personally, I just wanted to be able to, uh, I wanted to be able to like, you know, really create generational wealth. But, you know, the background that I came from was just watching my mom and dad go to work every single day, exchange hours for dollars. And uh, and I love basketball. I fell in love with basketball at an early age. I wanted to go to the NBA. And, and my view of the NBA was not just the money, but being able to take care of my family, mm. offer those same opportunities to the community, um, give back, things like that. And when I got to Morgan State University, it wasn't—it was no more basketball, right? You know, basketball comes was over at high school, and so get to college and I'm lost, right? Because now, like, I didn't—I never had a dream job, dream career. Didn't see myself working for other people, so I was kind of just in that crosswind. Um, and I remember just basically started selling marijuana and having a job, right? That's how, you know, I, and I was going to college. But, you know, I was skipping classes. I was chasing the girls. You know, I was right about all the wrong stuff. And um, one day I got introduced, uh, one of my uh, classmates came to me and was just like, look, man, you know, are you open to making some, you know, some serious income, like outside of what you do now? And I was like, yeah, you know, like, you know, what is it about? What's, you know, what is it, what is going on? And so he just told me that he knew a, a mentor that was in real estate. Mm. And that was like the next best thing. So if it wasn't going to be NBA for me, right, I thought that real estate would be a way that I could definitely achieve my dream. So long story short, I, I, I met the individual and, you know, he had the, you know, name on his shirt. You know, he was, you know, tailored. Looking crispy. Yeah, he was, not, he was icy. You yeah. know what I mean? And so that was basically my first representation of seeing what money looked like that wasn't somebody who sold drugs or that wasn't somebody that was like, you know, NBA, NFL player or just, you know, in that kind of limelight. And so um, that's really what, changed my life around because honestly before then right it was the drug it was smoking weed it was you know percocets it was you know i wasn't big on miley but you know i definitely dealt with the e-pills i definitely just was a product of the environment of you know basically you know being a part of you know being young using drugs going outside hanging out and so kind of in baltimore you just you know what i'm saying like once you kind of get to that point where you're in high school and you kind of get into being an adult most people just using drugs mm. most people just kind of work in if they are on a positive some people either like work and do their drugs and do their thing, or it's kind of like some people just all the way outside, they in the streets, they they, they sell, they on the corner, they do drugs, whatever, whatever, right? And so I kind of seen that was the path that my life was going in. And, um, you know, just was blessed, bro, to basically get introduced to an influence mm. that basically kind of, you know what I mean, gave me a different tra trajectory. And uh, I would say really what was tough was just being a product in my environment, right? You know what I'm saying? Seeing, like my, uh, my first experience of seeing somebody die was like around 11, 12 years old. Um, you know, Bel Air Road, right? If anybody from East Baltimore know Bel Air Road, like, yeah, you know I mean, I was 11, 12 years old, and one of my uh, closest friends, his brother, and he was like a big brother to us. He was like 15, so he used to you know, watch out for us, make sure we was good, right? And I know, you know, he got, he got, uh, 
killed the gun violence. Mm. You know what I mean? I remember being like 11 or 12 and just, you know, that was really one of the things that made me kind of lock in the basketball so heavy back then because I just didn't want to be a product of the streets and things of that nature. Um, but kind of when I got older and basketball wasn't it, well, I know I grew to five foot seven, right? As you can see. Right? <laughs> so, you know, basketball just wasn't going to work. You had them hops, though. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had a little bit of game, though. You know what okay. I'm saying? I had a little game. I was played point guard. And I think that's really another thing that helped me just in maneuvering business, too, being a point guard, floor general, understanding teamwork, being coachable, things like that. A lot of that stuff kind of came from just being in basketball. So yeah. I do accredit that to, you know, my success. But definitely um, being in Baltimore growing up, seeing people get shot, you know what I mean, seeing people use the drugs, just seeing the, the environment around you. A lot of people uh, cut corners, want to do shortcuts. A lot of it's just the wrong mindset, you know what I mean, when it came to success. And so I think that once I got introduced to that mentor, bro, and I, I started reading different books. I got access to different information. That's when everything changed. Yo, so what? So what's what's the Baltimore streets really like, bro? I was in Baltimore a couple months ago. Okay. It looked like it got ran through, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it looked like it, it don't look like a happy place. No, it's a, it's a you know it's a beautiful city with a lot a lot of people that have been through a lot of trauma. Mm. Right. I'm I'm talking about a lot of trauma, like. Was it a nice part of the city? Yeah, I mean, they got some nice parts. You know what I'm saying? They got some nice parts. Um, I mean, it may not be that city you would call Baltimore City. Because right? the real estate don't look like the like the, like the the building right. look. It look abandoned, yeah, ran yeah. through, you Which know what I'm saying, systematic. ransacked. It's all systematic. Mm. So it's all systematic. What happens is, what you, what you see is that, like, in certain parts of Baltimore, right, um, there is some what they call... Uh, build up right so when you think about downtown in a harbor right that's literally a part of the city but everything around there is built up mm, everything yeah. around there property value wise is up um you got risk calling down there you got some pretty you know um really really big establishments in the actual harbor once you kind of remove yourself from that part and you kind of go to those outskirts or around the outskirts of the city then you know you kind of see where the system has failed right and kind of put in for impoverished people in the same environment um, didn't really give them access to information, but what they gave them access to is resources from the government, right? And so some people can use those resources too and kind of elevate. But yeah, you know I mean, I think that what happens is when you when you think of it from a standpoint, like it's putting a lot of people in an area that don't have information that also don't have ownership, mm. and that's really where you come, where come poverty comes in, abandoned building comes in because basically the people that do have the ownership don't really care about the community, yeah. don't care to uplift, uplift it, it yeah. and build it. So. And that's really, you know, even uh, one of the uh, things I, I think that when you talk about controversy too, like, you know, I, I watch a, a guy named, uh, I think it's Claude Anderson, uh, Claude okay. Anderson, Dr. Claude Anderson. Yeah. And he was talking about how a lot of people praise Martin Luther King, you know, talk about Martin Luther King and how he did this and that. But, you know, basically one of the things that Dr. Claude Anderson says is that, you know, when Martin Luther King integrated us, right, and it was no more ownership that we didn't own our own buses, we didn't own our own mm. companies, we didn't own our own banks anymore. So once that integration happened, that was the issue. Right, because now we, as a people, as a culture, did not own anything. There was yeah, no ownership. I could right, see that. and so it's like you know, it's so many different perspectives on that. But it's, it's like I can understand that because when you fast forward to now, you know, the reason that we're doing podcasts, educating people, so that basically we want to help people go from the nine to five or from the regular lifestyle to having some sort of ownership, digital marketing, branding, right, and having some type of ownership in yourself. Um, within your community and that you can give some education back, right? So it's yeah. all about like creating ownership. So that's really where the breakdown comes at. So so how how are you able to really like navigate that environment? You know what I'm saying? Because you mentioned the, uh, um, you know, the impoverished, you know, um, situations. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, people either being really, really outside as far as like heavy into the drug use right. or, you know, the recreational use. Right. You know what I'm saying? not really having a lot of access to anything it seems other than the government, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, support, which is obviously by design. Mm -hmm. How how do you then, you know, navigate through all that, decide that you want a little bit more? Obviously, you know what I'm saying, you you got connected to the to, to the real estate guy, mm -hmm. the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And what led you to kinda, you know, number one, want more, mm -hmm. but then to not fall into those other, you know, um influences. No, it's uh it's I remember like yesterday, bro. So I remember like going to college. Uh, I was going to Morgan State and I was selling the marijuana. That was my, so I, I, I remember, first thing is I understood like, you know what I mean? When you go to work and you exchange time for money, it was a couple of different like scenarios. So first I had a job at McDonald's and like- Shout out to the Apple Pies. Yeah, shout out to McDonald's, right? And um, <laughs> I remember it was a couple guys, like basically we was all like, 
he's 16, 17, in that range, right? And we wanted to see like who could work the like who could basically run up the most hours and get the biggest check. Oh, you're trying to run the hours up. So we like I had I did that too when I was at when I was at Sprint. Yeah, I didn't even go home, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was a hard, I've always been that guy. Like I the work my work ethic, I I've always felt felt like I'm I'm somebody who outwork anybody. Like I don't know what the industry is. It don't matter. Like just like if you give me that plate to run that 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 play, you you put me in the game. I'm gonna outwork you. I might not have all of everything figured out. I might not got that. I'm gonna outwork you, right? Like last night, you say boom. They went to let your ladies look boom. Bro, yeah, went to I'm gonna tell you, then. we ain't gonna let your lady. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like we went to work. I went to yeah. work, right? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So that my ethic was always there. But I remember, okay, so boom, we put I put a bunch of hours in. I ain't even had the most hours. That was the crazy part. Like I didn't even have the most hours. But I remember, like, my check was like, I don't know, McDonald's, I think it was like 11, 1200, something like that, gross. And then after Uncle Sam did what he did, and, you know, and I think the check came out like five, six hundred dollars. And I think it was, um, I had the wrong perspective at the time because my mindset was more discouraged mm. that you could go and put that much time in. Right. And, it's, yeah. and then basically, like, they take all the money. And I'll never forget that the minute I got my check, the next week, I said, put me back on the 20 to 30. Yeah, like, put me back on regular hours. Because if I'm going to go do this all this work and then they're going to get all the money, I might as well just supplement. Yeah, yeah, yeah do yeah, something yeah. else, right? So that was big for me. Like, just the system of the, like, not even understanding dependence and yeah, exemptions. Yeah, yeah. So you've seen that? Yeah, I just you, seen, okay, that. seen like, that. Like, 17. Like, yeah. oh, this is crazy. Like, I put a lot of work in. I was here all day, all night. Like, boom, they, I was saying, I got most of the money. Mm -hmm. So that was big. Uh, so from I, I that was just understanding the system, right? So then when you talk about navigating, getting introduced to the mentor was was very key because, and as I'm thinking about this, man, it's really just examples. You know, when I think about it, it was nobody that I could look back in my community that was an example of what was even possible. Like there was nobody that I can think of that's like, hey, bro, this is possible. Bro, that's why I'm asking you. Yeah, like how, how the hell did you yeah, get? How'd you get here? Yeah, so it was the I think really genuinely it was it was attaching myself to the mentor, bro. Mm. I, I promise you, I think that like that was literally ninety percent of it. And but I was, the reason I'm saying that is because when I say there's no example, I think that when when you have other examples, it makes people feel like they can look at somebody and say, I can do that. Mm. If I see Brendan doing it. We see Myra and we see Neo. We see like, okay, we can do that because we see so many other people doing it as an example, right? So it's like, yes, you can do it. There's a community of other people that have also done it. When I got introduced to the mentor and it was like nobody else was doing it, right? And he was like the example. He was the example, but he wasn't somebody that I knew. He wasn't somebody that my family knew. He wasn't somebody that my friends knew. Like, he wasn't any of that. It was somebody that was totally new and he was European. He was white. Hmm. So that was another thing, right? Was, the whole time in my mind, I had this image of this black dude that was well dressed in a nice suit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I white pulled guy. up in that brand new. You saying it was a white dude? White guy, man. Mm. It was crazy because and that was the thing. I remember one of my closest friends when I introduced him. I introduced him, and uh, she was like, "Oh, well, you know," because he was from Salisbury, like Ocean City area, um, three hours away from Baltimore. Um, and that was another thing, man. He just wasn't around. He wasn't easily, yeah. easily accessible too. Yeah. So it was like I, the mentorship was there, the coaching, but it wasn't like I just could call and just pick up the phone. You know, it wasn't just a lot of easy access. But the reason I'm saying that it was so key is because I didn't have information. So what happened was when I got attached to him, what he opened me up to was the gym role. Mm. What he opened me up to was the the uh, you know what I'm saying the Eric Thomas's the 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 Les Brown like just getting into the gym role. And I say that. And you know how YouTube, it gives you all these different other categories. Yeah. So, like, once you open me up to the, the perspective of Jim Rohn and just listening to a different mindset, right? I remember, like, just being, like, in Baltimore, just riding around. And I remember one day Jim Rohn said, made a comment, like, you know, how about paying your bills? And he was like, his mentor said, you know, that, you know, uh, Jim was complaining about paying his bills. He was like, man, what do you mean you don't want to pay your bills? Like, you don't want to, you know, decrease your liabilities and increase your assets, right? And I never had that perspective on paying my bills. Mm. So all this time when you grew up in Baltimore, everybody is trying to not pay the bills. Shortcut, oh, call BGE, like, can I get an extension? Oh, I finessed them, like, boom. But then you get this other perspective where it's like, yo, you can pay your bills, which is decreasing your liabilities and increasing your assets. Mm. Totally different mindset. And so to me, that's like, that's what like literally how I changed. I started listening to it every day. I started feeding my mind every single day. I turned the music off. I turned the PlayStation off, yeah. bro. Now that you think about it, when I go back, this is the, this is what happened. The girls, the girls, when I got in, you know into business and I started entrepreneurship, boom, the girls just left. 
because now it's not that I'm not on the same time frame. I'm not just trying to kick it with you, just woo woo and just woo. Now I ain't trying to do that. Like I'm trying more and more educate myself. If we gonna kick it, I'm gonna be sitting and listening to this this guy talk this information. It ain't gonna be just watching the YouTube and the Netflix, right? So it was basically changing all of that. I had changed everything. My influence is what I was listening to. What yeah, I'm gonna need. So so listen, we we gonna give y'all something. We, I'm gonna need to play ball play real quick. Yeah. I know there's somebody watching, somebody listening, right? They like, yo, I feel what he talking about. Right. Right. I got all these distractions. Right. I want, I want to give them like, I want you to give them like three, four, or five things they can do right now. They can stop doing right now. Okay. To stop putting themselves in a different mindset. First thing is like, um, the first thing is what you listen to and what you read, right? Because like we all don't come from wealth and or we don't come from much. So with your environment is so important. A lot of times, building your environment is based upon what are you feeding in your mind, mm. right? So. In, in, a, in a different speed, I'm a, I personally, I'm someone who turned Neil Davis on. So I went on Apple Music. Okay, this is the step by step. I went on Apple Music. I paid $9.99. Let's, let's start with that. On Apple Music, you can download, okay, um, you can download Eric Thomas. You can download Les Brown. You can download Coach Stormy. You can download Neil Davis. You can literally download those people and that they have multiple different CDs and stuff about Mindset, by Proctor, all these different people. Now, what you have to understand is that you have to do this every single day because you have been you have been programmed to fail, but you can wire yourself for success. Right. And so what happens is you have to re you have to change your programming. So what happens is like you I think about everything we've been taught in school. Right. Hey, like, OK. Framework of when you go to school, right, they say you got to raise your hand to speak. When you think about a business owner, boss, right, you own a business. Have you ever in your community had to raise your hand to speak? <laughs> SBS, can I say something? Yeah. <laughs> right? Nah, nah, nah. No, right? So it's like when you think about that, that's all teaching people how to be employees, not how bosses operate. Mm. So I would say first thing, step is change your programming. So everybody's different. So speaking. everybody going to get an Apple account or a Spotify account? Yeah, Apple or Spotify. Pay 999. Yeah, 999. Open that up. Open that up. And you say they should get, uh, they should download or tune into Co Stormy potentially. Yeah, Eric, Eric Thomas, Thomas, Neil Davis, Davis uh, uh, Les Brown. Les Brown. Yeah, just all of that. Personal development, Jim okay. Brown as well. Just start. Um, and then what happens is too, okay, all these are different people, but you got to find your speed. Okay. Mm. So find like who works for you. I'm a big Neo guy. Yeah. I, I'm Neo all day. Neo talk, he yell, he talk that yeah. talk. You know what I'm saying? You need to retire. You should retire your parents, right? I, like, so find out who your speed is and then you just dive into it every single day. And what's going to begin to happen is that, like, when you start to make decisions, you're going to start making decisions based upon the information that's now going into your brain, mm -hmm. right? You're going to start making different decisions. You, when people call you to hang out and stuff like that, it's just going to be different because now you're getting different, you're being fed different information. Your environment now is becoming different, Yeah. right? So that's one thing that I would say to do. Next thing is, right? Like everybody has expertise, right? Like or something that you're good at, something that you know better than someone else. Um, and so what you can do is you got to come up with some type of business. So what happens is too that we always see is a bunch of LLC starters. Mm. Oh, I started my LLC. Oh, I started my LLC. Or I started my LLC. But did you actually start a real business? Right. I would rather somebody like before you start your LLC, do you have a product or a service? Have you already made some sales? Yeah, yeah. I always say that, bro. I always be like, yo, your LLC going to cost a couple hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Make that money first. Right. Test, test it on the marketplace. Use that bread to start your LLC. Because some people are perpetual just just like set Yeah, set-upers. You know, you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Perpetual set I need this, 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 I need this. Yeah. And never start. Yeah. It's kind of like it's kind of like the, uh, I mean, uh, you play hoop. I mean, you hooped, I hoop. Right. It's like the dude that comes to the court, he got the headband. Right. He got, he got the kicks, he got yeah. the socks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He got the shorts and master jersey. He look good. You know what I'm saying? He got the bands, everything. He ready to go. He got the water. You know what I'm saying? He got the bag, everything. You know what I'm saying? Giving the pads wide open. And then he never going to get it. You know, he always there. He never get in the game. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you get in the game. He ain't got no he game. He got no game. Because he spent all his time Looking good. getting everything. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But not actually working on this game. Yeah, that's, 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 that's. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, and the reason I say the next thing is a product or service because what happens is you got to be able to apply the mindset session mm. or something. Right? So, so, break that down real quick, though. So, when you said product and service, you're talking about some specialized information. What if I'm just good at housekeeping, bro? How can I monetize that? Same way, right? Like, so you start a service. That's a service. So, that's a service based. So, so you're saying if I'm if I'm really good at like cleaning my apartment, yeah, I'm like nasty at it. You know yep. what I'm saying? You know, people in the family know, friends know. Yeah. You know, my 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 place is like pristine. I clean apartments. Yeah, I mean, I do this. So you telling me that I could 
take that ability, that's that that skill set. that skill set. Yeah. I can turn that into a service. Yep. And then and then what would I do then? We we got a market, right? Okay. We got a market, right? We got to take pictures of your cleaned up apartment. You're right. We got to take pictures of the clean. First, we going to take pictures before it was clean, right? Well, you know what I mean. If we can figure out a way that we can clean it, or I might do this. Let's say I keep my stuff already clean. My stuff always clean, right? I'm gonna call a family member who I know they keep their stuff dirty, mm. right? Boom. Look, let me do this. Let me call you. Hey, Brandon, look. I don't want to say you because you're not dirty, right? But let me call somebody. <laughs> hey, yo, look, yo, bro. You call me dirty right yeah. now, bro. <laughs> look, bro, so, uh, look, bro, I know you keep your spot dirty, but look, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm, I want to start my new business, okay? And I want to clean your joint for free. The only thing I'm asking you is can I take pictures of before and can I take pictures after mm. I clean it? Right, boom, so now it's free, right? Yeah. You do a free cleanup, right? Now that person's going to be happy. You can even get them to do a testimonial, right? Boom, hey, look, this person just cleaned my so I trust this business. I trust this company. They do it. And now I'm just going to use that to market, right? Because now I'm going to basically let people know. I might make a flyer, get a flyer out. I might yeah. use social media. I mean, I might start with my job. I might word of mouth my situation, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to get some customers fast, I might do, you know what I mean? I might do a couple... You know, where I clean clean your joint for free in exchange for a testimonial, right? I'm I'm just gotta get the work out. Right. So I'm but the reason I say that because a lot of time when you change your mindset, I see so many people feed their mind the right stuff, but you can't you can't necessarily apply it to a job. Mm. Right? Because at a job you cannot create wealth. A lot of jobs don't allow you to grow, right, to your fullest potential. Yeah, right. When you right. think about a tree or when you think about nature, all nature is predicated on growing to the highest possible capacity. The known until it's over, right? But with humans, we get a chance to choose whether we want to grow to our highest capacity, a little bit of capacity, right? Yeah, that's crazy though, because because now that you say it, yeah, if you compare, if you if you compare yourself or compare people to, let's say, a tree in nature, right? The tree is gonna grow to the highest capacity, Possibly. right? Yeah. But humans, we limit ourselves, and we're really putting the limitation on our own selves, on our own. Because it's not that says, like, hey, I can only, I can only read this book mm -hmm. or I can only make this amount of money. We place that on on ourselves, which is crazy because like you said, it is programming. So we picked that up from somewhere telling us, hey, I can only make 50K a month. And then you don't even look for jobs that might want to pay you 70. Yeah. Because you only feel like you can only make 50. It's our programming. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, it's our programming. That's crazy. And that's why it's so crazy about like listening to this stuff first because that's programming your mind for, for the success. That so you they want. need that. They got to have that. But that's why you got to have a vehicle. Even if you have a job, you have to have something outside of the job as a vehicle. That's why I would cleaning business, whatever it is. You have to have something you believe in that can surpass your current belief level. Mm. Right? Like if you're at your job and your check is whatever it is every two weeks, that's going to be your current belief level. To expand upon that, you have to get something new, new job, new money, new employment, something new to expand you with, from where you are right now. And that was, and that's really what most people fall at because they might have the mindset. They might be listening to it. They might go to the gym and work out, but they going to work. And they don't got that side hustle. They don't have that side business. So they don't, they can't really apply the mindset to nothing but their job, but and their job only can yield you a certain result. What's up, y'all? Listen, if you are a business owner or entrepreneur and you juggling your email, your text messages, you don't have a CRM, you don't have any automation, you don't even have your social media post scheduled, I have the solution for you. What you wanna do is tap into the lead attraction system. This is an all-in-one system that's gonna handle your text messaging, your email, your CRM, your invoices, get you paid, your digital products, your memberships, your courses, your funnels, and also it's an all-in-one solution. So you can get rid of all all these other things it's in one system you pay one price every single month and they also have a weekly office hours so i don't know what you're waiting for tap into the platform and make sure that you grow your business lead attraction system grab the link below let's go so they need to uh lock into some new information right start reprogramming themselves yeah they need to think about a skill set or something that comes easy for them yeah that they can turn into a product or a service yeah and then if they are working a job they need to figure out some time daily that they can put aside to work on a, working on that thing. Working on that business. Yeah. And then get some marketing behind it. Yeah. Get some marketing. And I would say a good goal is just like, you know, first thing that most people that, that as a, if you coming out, let's say you look, you take a look at this right now, right? And you're at a job. Your first thing you need to do is set a goal to match your full-time income. Hmm. Right? Because so many people, that's like, what's the goal for the business? Let's match my full-time income. Because no, as soon no. as you can do that, that means you can what? Leave your what? job or you've now given yourself something called options right see another thing that i realized when when i was growing up right we don't have options right like 
think about it. Why would a person go get a job at McDonald's if they have the options to do whatever they want to do, right? Why do people settle for certain things they settle for? It's because they don't believe that there's other options. So a lot of times in life, you have to build the options for yourself. People are not going to make that give you just give you options. So you got to go build that. Right. And so that's what the side hustle, your business, your vehicle, if it's network marketing, if it's, you know, what I'm saying digital marketing, mm -hmm. if it's a product or a service, whatever it is, you got to understand you have to have a vehicle that can basically surpass whatever your belief is right now. Right. Whatever your beliefs are. And that's the thing to get to a new belief. You got to understand it. you have to start new and get new what information. Mm -hmm. Right. So. And Kyle, you understand that, right? Like you've you spent, like you've talking about us. You spent. Let's talk about that too. You spent over a quarter million on. I spent a, I spent a quarter, bro. Okay, quarter, a little, little light like quarter. Okay, a light like quarter. Yeah, yeah it's like, but let's talk about that though, right? So, what what do you feel like was the benefit of that environment, the information, and what would you suggest to somebody who, let's say, they just starting out, they can't maybe invest quarter mil. But what do you? What was your? What was your early journey on? Like, you know what I mean? I think the first thing people need to understand when it comes to investing in yourself. Uh, if you invest in yourself, that that's 100% write off. You can't write off college, but you can write off my mentorship investment. You yeah. can write off programs. You can write off courses. Right. So you're really, it's really basically free. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're just exchanging the money that doesn't mean anything right now, because right. money has no value. Right. Right. They're hope notes. Right. So exchanging the hope notes for something tangible that you can learn, that you can turn into a product or a service, yeah. or allow you to think or execute on a higher level to get some money. Yeah. Right now, let's say you got the money and let's say you 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 made the money that you invested back. Guess what? I still have the information. Right. So I can keep making money. Right. I still have that product or service. Right. I can keep making money. Right. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I would 100 percent agree. I remember like what I did was. I would wake up early. OK, so. If you want some extra time in your day, the number one thing you can do is wake up an hour, two hours early. Yep. If you wake up an hour, two hours early, that's going to give you 60 to 120 minutes of time that you didn't have before. Yep. Or you can wake up an hour early and go to bed an hour late. Hour late yep. Right? Yep. Or if you don't watch Netflix, don't watch sports, you know what I'm saying? Like you can cut find up. pockets of time yeah, you that stuff. you can do. Yep. Or even in your car when you're on your drive, right? Yep. So I'll wake up two hours earlier. I would uh, do 20 minutes of an audio book. 20 minutes of a physical book. Okay. I write down my goals. Okay. Um, I have affirmations. I read my affirmations. I would do push-ups. Okay. And then I hit the gym. Okay. And then when I'm at the gym, I'm listening to, you know, Eric Thomas okay. or Neo or uh, Alex Ramosey okay. or Grant Cardone or something. You know what I'm saying? I got that on while I'm hitting the weights. Gotcha. So by the time I finished the gym, I done did more work than most people have done. And, I, and I'm just starting the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At this point, it's like 6 o'clock or 7 a.m. Right. I got all that stuff done. You know what I mean? Another cheat code I started doing later is I would um, I would prime my subconscious. And this just shout out to uh, Peter Kell. Prime your subconscious. So just imagine, like, we talked about, like, uh, being from up north, so it's kind of cold, right? right? You had to go up and start the car. Yeah. So priming your subconscious is like doing the same thing for your mind in the morning. Right. So you're waking up. And it's like, you know, it may take you a little bit to get going. So me prime my subconscious, what, what I learned from Peter Keller is um, I write down how much money I want to make every single day. But I would tell myself, I would write it down. Like, remember, like, uh, when we were in uh, elementary school, I don't know if it was the same for you, but if you got in trouble, you had to write, you, have, you used to have to write on the board. Yeah. I will not X, Y, Z, <clears> you know what I'm saying? I will not, you know, like yell in class, whatever. Yeah, so many times. Yeah. So I would do the same thing, you know. Uh, let's say uh, I want to make 5K in a day. I'd be like, I'm so happy and grateful. I'm now making five thousand dollars a day. Got now I'll write that down twenty times. So I'm, right now I'm priming my subconscious to believe what I'm going after to achieve before I even start in the day. Gotcha. So your mind, the conscious and the subconscious, subconscious is always working on what you tell your mind to work on. Right. So then it's like you plant a seed, and like two days later you're like, oh I got it. Yep. Or a week later like, oh I got it. Yep. Or you might say something that I was missing, but I was I was thinking about it, but because I was thinking about it, you said it and now now connect it. Yep. I'm like, oh, I'm ready. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I that's what I did. I called the millionaire mindset. But it, it, and to your point, right. my first, mo well, not my first, but my morning routine became my first product. Gotcha. Right, sir. So people, right. I knew that people sucked at being okay. accountable, mm -hmm. didn't have any discipline, didn't have any direction. Mm -hmm. So I, my first digital product was a $300 program. Got you. 
30 days, I called it the millionaire mindset. You paid $300. I took five people and I basically worked with them to make sure that they had a morning routine, that they were accountable, that they did the things that I told, that I just went over with you. Gotcha. And if you did that for 30 days, you can, you can give me this guarantee without me saying there's a guarantee. Right. You will be better. Right, 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 right. There's no, if you, if you reading, meditating, going to the gym, writing affirmations, uh, going over your goals, yeah. praying, all of that stuff. Right. Doing an audio book. Right. <laughs> You ain't, there's no, there's absolutely no way you ain't gonna be the same person, bro. That's true. You're gonna be a different person. So how many people in the, in your first cohort? So the first cohort? Executed it. So I only really? did five. Okay. So I, I so my first, yeah, so the first three, this is my first time I ever did a, a product, right? Got you. I did three, so the first three cohorts, I made, what's that, 4,500. Okay. So it was like five people, five people, month one, month two, month three. Got you. I was out. So that's that level of belief. Got you. I've never did, I've never did that before. Okay. But I invested, I think, $1,000 to learn how to coach, but it wasn't even a program for me to make money on. It was more psych psychological gotcha. that, okay, this is the framework that I could use to coach someone. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which, which you know, I wouldn't say you don't need that, but not everyone needs that. Right. But I invested because I wanted the foundation, I wanted some structure. Like, how could I do this? Right. coach you or how could I coach someone? How yeah. could I lead someone? So I invested in that. But in that first month, I got the money back. I spent a thousand. I created this program. And I was just kind of looking out in the in the um in the marketplace. I mean, even day one, no, day two of um the event that we was at, right? Like three or four people raised their hand. It was like they need discipline. Yep. So that program's still relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. At the mastermind. Yeah. At, you know, exactly. Yeah. So if I spent that first thousand and I made back fifteen hundred, you know what I'm saying, that first month, I'm okay. up. 500. Then I did it again and did it again. So I mean, it'll make it 45. Then I started investing in another another program, and that program is on mindset. Gotcha. That was 5k. Okay. And that kind of helped me just have a deeper level of belief. So I was still doing the Eric Thomas's and reading and the audiobook and stuff like that. Gotcha. But I still needed a new foundational belief. I still needed to rewire my mind. I still needed more accountability. I still need more discipline. So I invested 5k. I'm not even gonna hold y'all at that point in my life. I was like, 5K? Right. <laughs> now, what's the payment plan, fam? Yeah, yeah. You know, and even when he gave me the payment plan, I was still like, this is like a thousand a month? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it's just perspective, bro. Cause like, now somebody, it's, now somebody told me 5K, I'm like, Psh. right. Like, hurry up, let me get it. Like, you know what I'm saying? But so, see, that's it's the just thing. so it's just so different now. No, but that's the thing I wanna like touch on too, just like, See, it goes into like everything changes when the mindset changes, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, I think like for everybody, when you ask that question earlier, like that's the m most important part of everything because you can have the like, you know what I mean? Jim Rohn even says it, right? Yeah. I can give you all the skills, I can give you the tools, but if you don't have the right mindset, yeah, like you're not going to execute, right? That's why it's so important for you to get around different people. Yeah, that's why it's so so important for you to get into a different environment. Yep, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And like for me, I had to leave Boston. Yep. Like, like I left Boston, bro. This is when I knew, like, I knew I had to leave. Okay. <laughs> this is when I knew I had to leave. Okay. And I, 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 I told this story before. Okay. So I took my goddaughter and her mom. We all went apple picking. We went to an apple orchard. Got it. It was two hours out of Boston. Gotcha. Now, if anyone ever went to a pumpkin patch or or, or uh, apple orchard, there's hundreds of aisles. Got it you. ain't just like three. Gotcha. It's hundreds. Right, right, right. And they long. Right, 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 right. I get what you So we went, I don't know what type of apples we was picking, but we picked a random aisle, was in the middle of the aisle, loading up the bags, you know what I'm saying, going crazy. Okay. All of a sudden, somebody like, yo, Brendan. I'm like, bro, I got to get out of here. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm two hours out the city. Right. I'm in a random a, a random aisle yeah, right. <laughs> grabbing <laughs> apples, and I still run into somebody I know. Right, right. I got to get out of here. Okay. <laughs> So, so that that lit the fire under me to be like, all right, you got to get out of here. Okay. Like, I already knew, but that, like, cemented it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I had to leave because every one of my friends, they were making corporate six figures. Gotcha. And then they, you know, had a crib, was married, got about to get on. married, yeah. had a kid, had a car. And, and they just went to work, came home, went to work, came home. None of them, none of them was entrepreneurs. None of them was thinking out the box. Right. No, none of them was like, you know, we can make 20K, 40K in a month, 50K in a month, 100K in a month. We weren't having those conversations. 
I was having those conversations to myself, or at least I was like, I want more. I didn't necessarily know what more was at the time, but I knew I didn't want that. that right. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I had to put myself in a whole different environment. That forced me to then get into personal development. Gotcha. It forced me to, I got to do something different. I don't know what the different is, but it's different. Like, right. I got to be, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and then I, I, since I've seen so much death in my life, making the decision to spend some money or not, it was not a hard decision. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to invest in this program more. I'm at least, you know, a, like, test it out. A lot of us ain't even willing to test it out, but you're willing to spend 40, 50,000 or more on college. It's like you know what I'm saying? That, bro. It's just at a job. With no problem. But just even at the job. You know, you see people, with the, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, same job, same position, same, just everything, right? And it's like, bro, you can't say that you want more in life but literally come and do the same thing every single year. Like people literally was do every the same thing year after year after year, but every year say they want something to do. Oh, I want to start my business. Oh, I want to do this. But every year you're literally doing the same thing you did last year. You didn't get no new information. You didn't go to no class, no books, no seminars. And I think like, when you think about adults, man, a lot of adults just stop growing, bro. Yeah, no, like, no, that's facts. They like stop just growing. stop growing, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, and that's why it's also important when, you, when you're like picking your friends. Yeah. And picking, um, you know, your partner, yeah. you know, if you get into a relationship, yeah. it's important because you might be on some growth mindset. They might be on some chill. Yeah. And that's the person that you're sleeping with. So guess what? That's one that's going to be influencing you the most. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. It's, 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 uh, it's funny you say that because when you think about just development, though, right? And like we talked about trees and nature and like them just auto it's automatically preset that they're going to grow to the highest capacity. Mm. And it's just so funny how God created humans because we have the power of choice, mm. right? Whereas everything else in nature has zero choice. I'm gonna grow at the highest capacity, right? But you know, it's, it's love. It's love to have that choice, though, too. Yeah. Because if you don't want to be that person, good. Like you know, what I'm saying. But for the people like us that want to be that person, I think that, I think that's why it's like you have that balance when it comes to like when you look at the most successful people that we see and then we look at everybody that watches them in the stands, right? Yeah. And it's a part of people in the stands that feel like we hoop, right? Like I, when I, when you see LeBron or Kobe or whatever make a move, it's like, ooh, like yeah. I feel that, right? Yeah. Cause like that's like, you know what I'm saying? But we also understand we've been on the court and gave somebody a move and look, oh, they drive, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, like, yeah. Right. because we feel that. So we all understand that greatness, but it's all in us, right? But like it's certain things that bring it out of us. It's certain ways that we can all recognize it, right? And so, even like when you think about sports and entertainment and money, they they get paid is really because of the fact that we see us uh, see so much of us in them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and we just can't do it, or we just not out there, or we didn't put the work in. Mm. You know what I mean? So, but that's why when you think about entrepreneurship, it's a game where we we still can get there, right? Like you know, when it comes to the money, when it comes to the fame and things like that, you know, we can still do it, right? And I think like that was back, back to examples, bro. Like in Baltimore, Baltimore, there was no example outside of that that you could be a businessman, you can make forty, fifty, sixty, hundred grand a month. Yo, I didn't even know that was possible. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah. Like, I think that's probably like in the last three years, bro. Yeah. I I listen. Y'all y'all watching this right now? You can make a hundred k, two hundred k, three hundred k in a month. Yeah. And the only thing stopping you from doing that is just your, your mindset. <laughs> it's possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you had a if you had a hundred k offer, right? And you offered it ten times. And one person took it. You just made. It. You just made a hundred k. Yeah. If you got a fifty k offer and you offered it ten times and one person took it. Yep. That's fifty k. Fifty k. Yep. What if you made those ten calls in an hour? You just made fifty thousand in an hour. Hour. Yeah. In a day. In a day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What if you had a twenty k offer? Yeah. You made it ten times. One person took it. So what do you think? Like so, okay, let's talk about that too. So what do you think? Probably like, people's biggest problem with putting off, like understanding or putting an offer together. Like, I think it's fear, bro. Right. It's fair. It's like, well, first of all, people probably are afraid to to charge, which is a block. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then they feel like they don't have the value, right? If they don't have the value, or if they don't know how to value themselves, they're not going to price it accordingly. Right. Why would somebody want to buy my thing? You know what I'm saying? They want that. I, you can sell yours for twenty, but I'm gonna sell mine for two. Right. Because of value. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then they don't know where to put it. Like, how am I going to find a client that's going to pay me 20 for my thing? Right. I'm not, I'm not, you know, one of these big brands. Right. I'm not on Rodale Drive. Right. I'm not on, you know, 
What, um, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in the in the uh, design district or whatever, right. like, you know? So I think it's belief level. And once you pay, like, once you invest, it changes your belief level because you made the investment. So you could charge somebody at least what you invested. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I paid a quarter. Bro, I can ask you for a quarter million right now, no problem. Right. <laughs> right. No, you know what I'm saying? You paid it. Be like, yo, it's a quarter million. Yeah. You paid it. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's it. It's like, like people have to understand the value isn't the money. Yeah. The value is intrinsically yourself. It's, it's your investment. It's the time. It, 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 it's what you go out to acquire. You know what I'm saying? It's moments like this. You know what I'm saying? It's relationships. Uh, it's things that are tangible. The money's not even attached to anything. Yep. It's not, there's no gold standard. There's no silver standard. It's hope. It's a hope note, bro. Right. They can change the value of money tomorrow if they want. And it actually fluctuates every single day. The value of the dollar is not exactly the same. Yep. You know what I'm saying? The inflation and all of that stuff. So, like, at the end of the day, the value that you put on is what you acquire, right? And then what you present to the marketplace. And then the time it took you to acquire that. Yep. Maybe you spent time, you know, going through YouTube University. Right. Maybe you asked 100 entrepreneurs a question and you right. package that up. Right. You know, uh, we, you know, we're in quirky media, you know what I'm saying? We're in the studios, like how they got everything set up. Right. That's an offer. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. How did they set it up? Right. What if you wanted to set up your, you know, your Same studio? Yep. That's an offer. Right. So the things that you acquire, those could be monetized. Right. Those could be packaged up and given out. Yeah. yeah it can be. And, yeah. It can be uh, given out, could be sold. You know what I'm saying? could be a lead magnet to an upsell. Yep. If you got one thing, you could turn into multiple different you know, ways for you to get paid. I mean, you talk about the verticals. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So that's a good transition. Why don't we talk about the money? But before we talk about the money, okay. I think you got to pick a money card, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, let's go with... And then let them know what it is. Uh, 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 what you got? I save and invest money wisely. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you know, that's I'm, an affirmation. I save and I invest money wisely. Uh, I'm going to pick one for me. What, I, what we got today? Uh, by the way, these money cards are available in the link below if y'all want them, just, just so you know. This one says, I have the ability to generate any amount of money, any amount of income I choose. That's basically what we were just talking about. Yep. In the mindset, you know right? Yep. Bro, listen. Good little transition. Yep. Let's get to the money. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you help people get access. Well, first of all, you help people um, fix, repair, position and credit yep. so they can get access to fund yeah. to funding, so let's talk about why that's so important. Okay, why is it so valuable, and why should that be a priority for people? Because right. people put it on a back burner. So what happens is like we talked about it earlier with the Martin Luther King example, right? But when you think about what we talked about Martin Luther King and just how he integrated us into a community of people that already had ownership. What happens is like the reason why we're all, not all, but most of our community is in a situation because we all exchange time in so many ways, words, for money, right? So we're exchanging hours for dollars. When you think about that, if you think about someone who works eight hours, let's say 14 hours a day, right? Let's just say, what's a, what's a good like hourly wage right now, uh, you know? Twenty five. Shout out to the shout out to UPS workers. They make it like one seventy now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they said it's gonna kick in like three, four years, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah something like that. Um, okay. But I would say uh twenty five dollars, thirty dollars. Okay. That's, that's average. Do 50, let's do fifty, because it's not an average, but let's make it simple for uh, math, right? Fifty bucks sound crazy. Yeah, but I might sign up for that. I yeah. Lie. But okay, fifty bucks an hour, if you think about it, <laughs> what happens is so let's just say you work fifty dollars an hour. Let's just say you did work ten hours, right? That would be five hundred dollars if you did that for five days. It's twenty five hundred. At twenty five hundred, uh, at four weeks, that's ten grand. But we didn't, we haven't taken any taxes out. Mm. So let's just say taxes can be what thirty, forty percent. They're probably like forty percent. Forty percent. So on your ten grand, you just came home. You just basically took home six grand. If you took home six grand for twelve months, that's like seventy two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay, let's well, say you're, you're really good with the math. Yeah, so let's say with the seventy two, I'm not, but okay, guys, right? <laughs> with the seventy two thousand, right? Let's just say somebody had seventy two grand, right? This is after taxes, right? Okay, but like, did you, if you you can't save that seventy two thousand dollars the entire year because you had to pay rent, you had to eat, you got kids. Right, so when you think about somebody who, and we talking about at fifty dollars an hour right now, most people don't don't even make fifty dollars an hour, and this is just basically giving numbers, right? So when you think about seventy-two rights that you can't even save for the year, 
if you wanted to get an ownership, most of the things that we want to own or want to own that would bring in some type of value, I mean, 70000 really wouldn't do it. Now, yes, you could buy a distressed property, you know what I mean, or find a distressed property maybe in Detroit or Baltimore or one of those neighborhoods. But then now, if you bought the property, let's say thirty, forty thousand, you still have to do what? Rehab, mm -hmm. right? And weren't a renovate, right? So now we're talking about if you got to renovate, that's money going at. Meanwhile, you still have to eat. You still got to pay your rent. You still got to take care of the kids. So a lot of time when you think about people that don't really own, it's because of the way the system is built. The system has built and taught people how to focus on just exchanging the hours for dollars so that they never really focus on getting ownership, right? It's just a systematic thing. So now it's understand, okay, everybody in our culture, in our community has been basically bribed to go and exchange hours for dollars. And we're working for people who are in what? Ownership. Mark. Are in ownership, yeah. right? So it's like now, so basically once I kind of understood that, like in terms of, okay, that's the framework, I just wanted to be the person that was on the ownership side. Because when I looked at, you know what I mean, back at working at McDonald's, working all the hours, 1200 boom, my check was 600 from a $1,200 check. Right. So well, how does that work for the owner? Because if you own something, do you, they, they give you all your money up front and then you report, hey, look, this is how much I use to run my business. That doesn't even get taxed. Mm. Right. So now we're talking about now you're only taxed on what you said was what? Profit. Mm -hmm. Right. And we can agree that there's a lot of things that in, in, in our business world that we write off as expenses. We talked about courses, mentorship. Right. Think about investing in your mind. So now you can invest in your mind, become better as an entrepreneur and then write it off all off on taxes using the profits that you made from 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 your business. So when I just understood this, the different concepts that things that we were never taught, it drove me into really wanting to understand like how credit really works and how we can use it. Um, to our advantage, but the real reason that we should all be using our credit is so that we can all get an ownership, mm. right? And that's where it comes into play. A lot of, like I seen a lady, oh, I got seven on Facebook posts, I got seven on a credit score. Someone top, gets in the comments and says, hey, I can help you get 250,000. She say, oh, her comment was, oh, I'll get to you when I'm ready. And my mind was like, when you, ready, when you ready? Like, who would not be ready to get into ownership today? Unless you don't, unless you don't really understand that, really you're in slavery. Yeah, she's more excited about the the, the score than the opportunity that that she has because of the score. Because of the score. Yeah. And it's just like what Harriet told me, man. You know, I, I, this quote really stuck with me too because you know the quote of her saying that I would have freed more slaves if only they knew that they were slaves. That they were slaves. Yeah. So how many people right now because they get they got the job. You know, you talked about it, right? In Boston, so many of those people have what corporate jobs. Yeah, man. It actually, it actually. Uh, now, now that you say it, it actually made me a little, uh, uh, like, I was a little taken back the other day when a friend of mine was so excited that she got a job. And there's no shade right, right, right. at all. Right. But I was just thought about all her potential. Right. Like, her intelligence, you know what I'm saying? All her ability and what she could put into motion for herself. But she was more excited when she got hired by someone mm -hmm. to pay her what they felt they want to pay her. And she's not really even taking home that money because, like as you mentioned, exactly. you're gonna be we're gonna be taxed. Yeah. So I think you're 100 right. So people are less excited about their own potential because they've been programmed to just take a carrot and then just run that. When, when you think about it, right? What's this is what's crazy, is that they're so excited to work for a Johnson and Johnson, a Balenciaga. Someone else who has a name, mm -hmm. just like they have a name. Yeah. And if you got excited about your name, just how someone's got excited about their name, you could basically do the same thing for other people's families. You That's can have people who are so excited about your last name, mm. but it's like you're so excited about someone else's last name because they was excited about their last name. Yeah. You know why? It's because, and I think even in our community, bro, I mean, you could let me know your experience. Right. Our last names aren't, they're, they're not. Well, uh, I, I mean, I can definitely tell from my from my own perspective, but it wasn't like, yo, you're a boy, yo. Right. I mean, it's this, <laughs> yo. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. This, is, this is all, you know, like, yeah, yeah. these are our core values in the family. That's what we do, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't do that because you're a boy. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is what it is. Yeah. Like, you know what, bro? That's so dope. But, like, I want to start that. You know what I'm saying? Like, too, man, like we got and I, and I think And I think that's why, if you take it a step further, we talk about the trust. Yeah. Right? In a trust, there's a creed. Yep. Right? So, you know, you're gonna have a trust to protect your family, your assets, but at the same time, it could be a creed. Yep. There could be a crest. Yep. That means something. It's a symbol. Yeah. Game of Thrones. Yep. They got the flags. They got the symbols. Yep. They got the crest. They got the yep. creed. They got the colors. Got everything. Yep. We could do the same thing for our families. Where 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 were the houses? Just different families. Yep. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it, and I like, think that's lost. But I mean, bro, where are you from? Baltimore. No, where are you from? <laughs> I'm really from Baltimore. No, where are you from? Baltimore. Programming. Yeah. You yeah, ain't yeah. not from Baltimore. Baltimore right? <laughs> you're from you're from another country. Right. Right? Yeah. Maybe maybe Africa. Yeah, whatever, right. From a tribe. Yeah. A that different country that know. you don't know. Yeah, I never did the research. And what's your last name? Brown. It's not your last name. <laughs> That's it's a slave, slave name. name. Yeah, it's yeah. like boys. It's a slave name. It's true. Right? It's true, yeah. So I don't even want the core values from the house of boy. That's but, not even who I'm from. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I got Nigerian bl blood. I got some Scottish blood. I got some Irish blood. Okay. So clearly there was some that. raping and pillages popping up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But at least knowing that if, if, a part of my lineage is Nigerian, like, yeah. I need to I need to oh. find out more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like even on that level, we should be on some Malcolm X, bro. Yeah. We should yeah. we should we should retake our names. Yeah. I agree with that. It's funny you like, said. Like why am I on some Brendan Boy shit? Yeah. <laughs> That's you know true. What I'm no, I get it, bro. That's facts. I mean, bro, look, listen. If y'all watching or listening to this, if y'all never seen me. Y'all be like, you a white dude. <laughs> Brendan's an Irish name. Yeah. Boy's Irish. Yeah. Bro, I'm white. I'm a white dude. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I got the slave name. Yeah. That goes back to what you were saying. We don't know how far back we've been programmed. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're championing a slave name. That's deep. We have no core values. Yeah. We got no crest. We got no creed. Don't know how home. And we're willing to spend and invest and throw it all away for the Balenciagas, for the Johnson and Johnsons for the Hermes and, yep. and all these different brands. Names, because yeah. we feel like there's no value in our shit. In our stuff. So just like you said, yes, I am willing to work for, yeah. you know, these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna pay me, oh, I need, yo, um, yeah. can I negotiate? Yeah, yeah. I need 3750. Yeah, you gotta oh, negotiate yeah. your value. Hey, hey, yo, hey, yo, yo, SBS, they wanna give me 30, bro. <laughs> I got 3750, bro. We lit. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And they thinking that, oh, I just... That's crazy. I just... Yeah. You know what I mean? I just got an extra $10. Is your revenue stuck? If you're an entrepreneur and your revenue is stuck, you don't need to fix your products or services. You need new audiences to discover you more consistently. Podcast guesting is an ideal way to be discovered 24 hours a day by your ideal client. And guess what? The more people that know you, the more people can flow you. Head over to podcastmasterypack.com and take advantage of your first or next podcast, let's go. But you know, it's funny you said about credit because like one of the things I understood about credit that like rocked my world, like my first play I think was when I first started fixing my credit in uh, Navy Federal, right? Shout out to Navy Federal, but Navy Federal gave me 50K. Mm. Um, you know, credit card 15, per, personal loan 35. So I looked at it like, yo, my credit score at the time was like a 630. It wasn't even like 700 nothing, it was 630. I was like, yo, I was able to go on a computer and get like somebody's yearly salary in five minutes. Yeah. And it was like, yo, people, this, this, like that, that's, that was when it blew my mind just how powerful credit was because people would literally go to work all year, get taxed, and get less than 50000 mm. And all I did was position myself with the bank or the credit union understood some things about how to make how to do the application and was able to basically get 50k right right then and there so so how could somebody position their credit like like what like what uh what would they have to do so the first thing is just understanding like okay we talked about your name your name is so important and what these companies will do is they want to tarnish your name they so i think i'm changing my last name bro yeah it's so you got to bro i think so it's okay yeah, yeah. i got you <laughs> i got to change yours too and i know i average <laughs> My name is Irish though, but I just be good work on that. You know what I'm saying? I, if I wanted to rock with James Brown and see, you know, he did the king of, you know, the king of music, you know, I could. That uh, is, but is that his real last name? Nah, we don't know. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's crazy. Okay. I'm Max Sandy. You, you listen. Yeah, yeah. Kirk, absolutely. I'm here. Yeah. I'm Max Sandy. Yo, yo, bro. Uh, in Africa, our yeah. last name's Brown. Right. Never met a Brown in Africa. That's what I'm trying to tell you, bro. Are you, are you straight from Africa, bro? Born and raised. I'm not changing my name. Okay. There ain't no Browns, bro. Oh boy. I'm changing that's, my that's, shit. That's so crazy. Fuck. So what's the like? What's the last name, bro? Uh, my last name is Mujiqua. Oh boy. I'm yeah, changing my. I'm changing my. A little joint. different from your Browns and your Boyds out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. He said out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my journey, bro. I'm gonna do some research. 2024. New you know what's funny? Like I had some some Nigerian business partners, and like they they gave me the name Adi Tunde. 
You know what I'm saying? What is it? It's like Ade Tune. It's Ade Tune Day. Ade Tune Day. Yeah. Your last name? No, it was just like on some. Yeah, I like that, bro. Yeah. That's Ade fine. was like King, I think the King has come or something like that. I like that, bro. Bad. Yeah, it was crazy. That's a good one to change it to. Yeah, right that's there. a good one, bro. Got one. Yeah. 2024. Yeah. That's change it. Okay, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but no, um, so so first thing with the credit though, right? What you have to do is understand that, like, it, it's it's all understanding that companies will literally try to infringe upon your name because mm -hmm. they, they the credit the way credit works every time, every time someone goes and does an uh, application, okay, like it doesn't matter what bank credit you're in, the credit reporting agencies, Equifax, TransUnion, Experian, they get paid mm -hmm. every inquiry. I'm talking about, so think about right now today, like it's Sunday. How many people do you think today applied? Around the world for a credit card, a lot, a lot bro, millions. You know what I'm saying? So they got they got paid every inquiry, right? So when I when you understand these are for profit organizations, it's understand that they're not to help you. So now we have to fight. Like you have to have the mindset going into the credit situation that you have that it's going to be a fight, right? It'd be like if you came to school and you knew you had to be for somebody, you and, you, and like everybody was talking about y'all fighting, and you came to school and like it wasn't about to be a fight. Yeah. Like nobody talk. Like no. Listen. Yeah. Like yo, y'all are fighting. Yeah. yeah. Brown. Brown versus Ani Tunde. Yeah. We're we're fighting today, right? Yeah. I'm saying we're fighting today, right? <laughs> and so what happens? <laughs> so what happens is like you know that was the first thing, just the right mindset. One, I understood that one. Uh, when you know the law, uh, 15 USC, uh, 1602A, it talks about the credit bureaus, right? The only bureau is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Mm. That's one. So once I understood that about they, that these bureaus, when you think of the word bureau, it gives you a mindset that they have jurisdiction, that they can get you locked up sometimes. You just think of the FBI. So a lot of times people don't fight because they really just don't have the right what mindset, right? We talked about this earlier. It all goes into your mindset. Yeah, so once you once you fix that, you hey, look, I know I'm going to have to fight. Look, I understand that, that, that you guys are not a real bureau. I just need to understand what do I have in my credit? A lot of people don't even pull their report. So we got to pull a report. You can go to annualcreditreport.com. All right, all right, so give us the steps, Joe. So they got to pull the report. Annualcreditreport.com. Yep. Start there. Mm. Or if you want to get go to my link, go to Mr. SBSIQ. .com. That's where they need to be going. Yeah, Mr. SBSIQ.com. That's going to be down in the bluff. Yeah, Mr. SBSIQ.com. So what happens is, boom, so you, you pull your report. Now, once we got the report up, we're going to look and see, like, for misspelled names, mm. misspelled addresses, and misspelled, mis like, places of employment. So what I tell people is when it comes to funding, like if I, if, let's say I want to go to a lender or a bank, or let's say I want to go to my friend, I want to go to Brendan, I want to get a loan. If I go to Brendan and I got three different names, three different addresses, three different places of employment, do you really feel confident that you can find me if you need to find me? Not at all. Right? So it's just like, and, and, and that's, so in Baltimore, that's how people want to move. They can't be found. Oh, I got. Oh, I got. They they never find me. Like that's, but that's not going to work when it comes to getting money for your business, right? So first thing is we want to have one name. So we want to fix clean your name, the 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 employment, and you also want to make sure you fix any addresses. You want to do that by calling in. So you want to call into the reporting agency, speak to the fraud department. Let them know that you saw some fraudulent names, you saw some fraudulent addresses, you saw some fraudulent in places of employment on your report, and you want to have it removed. And then you want to give them the right information. Hey, look, this is my correct name, correct spelling. Here's my correct address, correct spelling. Here's my correct place of employment. Update. I want you to update this and please send me a copy of my uh, report, you know what I mean, to this address right away. So you want to start there because um, you want to clean that personal information up because, one, now you want to basically look clean when, they go, when you go to banks, when you go to lending institutions, you want to look clean, right? You don't want to look. I think we call it dirty. Right? You just look dirty, right? You yeah. look like you're someone that's trying to be incognito, and that's just not. You look like what's that? Uh, catch me if you can, right? Like the guy. You just look like Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Like, like they don't want to do that. Deal with that. So then there's third party reporting agencies. So another thing that we gotta realize that, like in 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 life, right? Like, okay, we're entrepreneurs. We all like to collect da data. What, what you know? What do we want? We want name. We want phone number. We want email minimum, right? But there's other companies that will want that want to prey on your data they want to prey on what are you watching at night they want to mm -hmm. prey on you know what i mean what are you feeding yourself they want to prey on certain things so when it comes to your lexus nexus your sage streams your innovus your ars your um you know core logic you have uh clarity services there's multiple different what they call third party okay which is their reporting agencies just like a transunion experience it's not most people don't talk about them but what they do is they prey on your data so like lexus nexus most people have never done this, and you should also do this too. You should too. You should go on LexisNexis and get a LexisNexis report pulled, mm -hmm. right? Have them give you a LexisNexis report. Now, on that LexisNexis report, you're going to see emails from high school, right? You're going to see school emails. You're going to see information you haven't even used in years. But what happens is that it's still being reported, mm -hmm. 
right? So sometimes I say, oh, I couldn't get this address or oh, I couldn't get this off because you don't understand the Lexus Nexus is holding your information from when you were in high school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's why the address hasn't removed. That's why the debt didn't come off because they're still holding that information. So what you want to do is basically go into the third parties and they call it either opt out or freeze. Mm. And basically you want to start with them opting out or freezing. And most of those third parties have links that you can go to. Um, and somehow I get your audience that too, right? So we go in and we want to freeze, we want to opt out. The reason we're doing that though is because whatever information they do have, we want them to stop reporting that information about us to anybody else without our what? Any type of consent, mm. right? Because it's really what happened. A lot of people don't know about LexisNexis, having your email, your high school and stuff like that, the ARS save stream. All this is information that basically has been built by different stuff you've done. It could be different high schools you went to. It could be different jobs that you've applied for, right? You know how when you go to get jobs and they, and they send you get fingerprints, right? Different like- They got all that. Yeah, they got all that buried, right? And so it's like, you don't even think about it because you was just trying to get a job. Now I realize that what address did you put down when you went and got that job? What information did you give them when you gave them the fingerprints? And so a lot of time when we trying to get deletions and stuff like that we don't even think about those petty applications or those job applications and how that even plays into just companies holding holding our information right so that's the next step you want to freeze that then you want to attack um some basic laws i'll give you is uh 15 usc 1681 eb right and what they talk about is that a consumer reporting agency right whether that's your transunion your equifax experian your, your core logic whatever third parties any of those reporting agencies if they prepare a consumer report they have to use maximum possible accuracy, right? Mm -hmm. So with, with the word maximum, you know, we can say 100%, whatever, 99.999, but it says maximum. So that means that if, okay, if there's any slight inaccuracy, let's say the, 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 the dates open, dates last active, dates last reported, it could be the balances. If anything is not maximum accurate, it should be deleted. Yeah, it got to come up. Got to come up. Mm -hmm. That's the Fair Credit Reporting Act, right? Um, another thing is privacy. So if you got student loans, if you have repos, if you have some of those harder things, bankruptcies, right? A lot of times that's more of a violation of your privacy because what happens is, and I talked about it in the mastermind, but uh, 15 U.S.C. 1681A4, it talks about Congress like purpose for putting even the Fair Credit Reporting Act in place. One of those purposes is to protect, right, your right to privacy. Right. So a lot of times, OK, if I do a bankruptcy, that's fine. But you got to understand that when I file the bankruptcy, the bankruptcy itself does not the, the, the court, the public court does not report to TransUnion, Equifax or Experian. So there's those companies, again, LexisNexis, your ARSs, they will basically surf the court system mm. to see like who's done bankruptcy, who's done new stuff when they get the there's money in your joint. Yep. When they get the information, they'll call. They basically sell that information to you. Transient experience equifax but it was that was all done without your consent yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying so that goes into they violated your your right to privacy so a lot of times it's just that a lot of stuff that people have when they report they can fight they can get it off but you got to know the law you got to do some studying you got to understand where these companies are wrong at how they wrong and then basically what you can do to kind of get rid of it so so if somebody's coming to you and they got like a busted you know let's say credit score right report whatever they might be in the you know mid mid fives or whatever low right. fives. How much time does it take to actually like fix a report? And then once it's fixed, like like then like then what, what would somebody do with it? You know, and in, in my industry is always a magic question. Hey, how long does it take? How long is it gonna take? I always tell everybody, look, man, your process is gonna be your process, right? Like, and it goes back to your mindset because a lot of times if you go into a, if you go into a fight, let's say we talk about a school situation. So you go to school, you ready to fight. When you come ready to fight. You're ready for war, right? You're really ready to go until it, it's over. Until it's over, yeah. right? You ready. Now, sometimes we can agree we, who's been in a fight. You've been in a fight. You come in. Peace, peace. It's over. Yeah. But sometimes, like, sure. <laughs> you, know, you got people that get for going. money. Yeah, 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 yeah. get for your money. But I think that if you come in with the right mindset, mm. either way you'll win. And that's the right, right? That's the right way to go about it. Because what happens if you're if you're on a time frame, three months, six months, and I think that that's the wrong mind frame. Because like if I'm going into it and I want to be Johnson and Johnson, yeah. if I'm going into it and we talk about wealth building, we talk about legacy building, yeah. like I'm going into it like that. That's the Walk fight. Up. Yeah, I'm going into it. So it's it's like so 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 you shouldn't be going into it with the with the idea. Of, okay, this is gonna be three or four months. You go into it like this is what it's gonna be. This is my foundation. I'm, I'm gonna just continue to work on. Everything I could it's do. It's your foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes Because think about it. You talked about, right? Like, you you had to sell your house. But think about just not having to sell the house. Think about, like, okay, if someone had said, Brendan, it's going to take two years to build this foundation that no matter what happens to you, 
you're always going to be able to get money from the bank. You're always going to be able to save your businesses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, bro. If if you was around back then, yeah, I wouldn't have sold the house. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> where, where, where was you at? Was the question. <laughs> where was you at in 2008? You know what I'm saying. Hey, I think it was 2008. Huh? How? What kind of? So hold on. So let's talk about that. So yeah. you went to college. What school? I went to Curry College. Okay. What was the major? English. What? Okay. This is this is okay. You gotta get the story. Okay. Yeah. So English. <laughs> That's some like Boston Tea Party like I mean I, massacre like <laughs> like no disrespect like English. Listen, listen, yeah, listen. Like. I just went. I bro, I went. My grandmother wanted me to go. <laughs> I didn't want to go to college. She passed away, so I went. Okay. And then I remember the last thing she was like, "Yo, go go for something that that you uh, good at because you you'll you'll enjoy it. You'll stay English. Yeah, and I like writing. <laughs> I like <laughs> writing. I, did, okay. I went I went for English. English. I got okay. Hey, listen, bro. I graduated with three point four. I, I believe you. You know what I'm saying? So okay. So uh, summa cum laude. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here. Okay. I got my colors on. So, so okay. So you got the so you got the degree. Yeah. Okay. How are you getting real estate? That has nothing to do with English, bro. I got. I, I, that's the point. So I'm yeah, trying man. to figure out how did it write. So how did that like? That's, that's whole, what I'm saying. That's a whole another path. Bro. Okay. So how did the story get? That's what, I guess. I'm, can you speak? Like, give me the story a little Peter, bit. Yeah, I graduated. Sense. Okay. I, I applied to one job. Okay. It's Reebok. Okay, I Reebok. started a basketball league that became my first business in the city of Boston. Okay. Reebok had a position available for uh, director of basketball operations. Okay. I didn't get accepted for the job. Okay. I understand. I was a, I just got out of college. I'm not gonna get an operations job. Gotcha. But at that time, I was like, bro, this I, don't make no sense. I can do I got a basketball business. I'm running this basketball league in the city. Okay. It's a no brainer. Okay. Like, what, like, what's up? Right. So it pissed me off. Okay. So I, um, you know, they, they didn't accept me. Subsequently, one of my brother that, he ended up passing away. Okay. He introduced right. me to uh, a mutual friend okay. that had a clothing company. Okay. And um, I just went all in. With the clothing? We, with, okay. Yeah, with, yeah, with the clothing company. So the clothing company. That's how you started? Yeah, it went crazy. Okay. We was in there for like nine, 10 years. Huh? You have a job too or just all? I mean, the the first two years I was still working at, at the Sprint store. Okay. And then I fired my job and it just went all in with the clothing. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. And then fast forward. Uh, when the clothing company ended, actually it had it was like culturally impactful. So we had a lot of success. Gotcha. Um, when me and my business partner could no longer coexist, I would say, to run that business. Okay. Um, I needed to get into something that would replace the same type of income I was seeing. Okay. With with clothing. Okay. Um, that didn't have a potential, didn't have a ceiling. Gotcha. So that's when I got into real estate. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. So that was, that's a, that's a, that's a dope story, bro. Yeah, yeah. And I saw yo real real shit. I had two pair of Kobe tens in my closet, the okay. Kobe X's, the high top ones. Yeah. And I sold both pairs okay. to get the money okay. to invest in the real estate school. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. For the uh to get to, to start the school, just a schooling. Yeah. To okay. get the license. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you had to go to school. Uh in Boston, I think it was only like four weeks or something. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I did school and got my license like three, four weeks. Yeah. So so pay for everything plus the school and then everything you needed. Test. I yeah. just returned. How long how long how many times you take the road to test? Once, bro. Actually, no, 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 dead lie. I took it twice. I took that joint like, I don't know, like 10 times. The first time I took it, I failed by one point. Okay. Right? So I signed up immediately, took it the next day, and I passed the joint. I was pissed. Because so it was two tests. It was like one, you had to get like a 70 or something. I think one of them I passed it, and the other one I got like a 60. So I, I, took, the, uh, I took the state and the national. The first day and I, I passed the uh, first day and I failed both. Mm. I failed the state by one. Yeah. National, I, I trashed it. Yeah. Do you you didn't study, huh? You ain't study. I, I felt like I did, but I felt like I just studied the wrong way. You ain't study, bro. There's no way. No, I really took that joint like ten times. I took so I ended so up. You the next definitely time, didn't study. Next time I passed the state and failed the national. And so I took the national maybe like seven times, eight times. Damn. I mean, the last time I actually did pass though, it was I I did do an immersion. It was more of an immersion. Like, I I went to YouTube. Like yeah, I cut on the I cut on. I, I don't know if I was somebody who was you know talk like that was like giving the just whole broke it, broke it all yeah, down. everything down. Yeah, from the I mean that. I mean that the 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 school is just it's just a barrier entry, bro. Yeah, it was. It, it just weeds you out. Who yeah. really wanted it or not? And and that's a business with an assess. That yeah. test is a business. Yeah. Uh, when I took it in California, I passed it the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I like that's a waste of time, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I joined a waste. Yeah, but but I just I just wanted to know. It's kind of I just we both took. It. I just wanted to see how that. Yeah, because yeah. I know some people have definitely had some time, some challenges with that. Yeah, but. yeah. I'm a little better test taker apparently. 
English, yeah, English, English yeah. major, yeah. <laughs> it's your boy SBS right now. You take a look at this and you need funding or you need operating capital for your business, right? You need 50,000, you need 100,000, but you don't know how to get it. You don't know where to go. Your credit messed up, your credit shot. Well, look, you're looking at the person that's gonna help you because what we're gonna do is we're gonna number one, show you how you can remove all negative items on your credit in less than seven days using the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Then we're gonna show you step by step how you can get 50 to 250,000 in funding. And number one, once you get the funding, how you can use it to market and scale your business. So what you need to do is text SBS to 240-301-1661 and we're going to get you started in this process today. I can't wait to work with you guys. But, you know, I think that, uh, I think that like, when you talk about like just even like uh, opportunities and, 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 and understanding what credit can do, it, it once, once your credit is straight and once we can, I mean, because even like funding, when you talk about that, okay, you sold the house, um, even the ability to sell the house means that you had to have credit to get your house, right? Bro, listen, if I, that's facts. Right. I was in position. I didn't know that I was in position. Okay. But it worked. Okay. Like we made it work. Okay. But I was in position to acquire more the yeah. property. Yeah. Now, if I would have known about uh, financial literacy, gotcha. credit, you know what I'm saying, how better I, uh, you know, understanding of everything, I would have never sold the house. Right. Right. Because you could have rented it would, out. I would have I would, I already had to, not, not even rent it out, I would have had the bread. Right. I could have got... I sold the house to get the money to invest in the clothing. So company. why not? Like nobody told you about like an equity line of credit. I don't have no mentors, bro. No, I got where you. were you at? <laughs> no, I'm where was you at, bro? So listen, literally nobody. It's your fault. Nobody said you can get an equity line. Who was of gonna credit? tell me? There was no mentors. Okay. Listen, my grandmother passed. My uncle passed. No, my uncle was still alive okay. at the time. But my grandmother passed. My mom passed. My dad passed. You know what I'm saying? One of my best friends passed. Okay. I'm like, I don't want to say I was the smartest. Friend, no, you were, but, I'm, yeah, but I'm definitely the friend that was that was elevated that had motion yeah, at the time. Yeah. I had the most motion. Okay, I didn't know about mentors. Got you. So I didn't know who to go to. Got you. You know what I'm saying? And then my friends going to me for stuff because right. I got I got the motion. Right. So I didn't have nobody to talk. To. No, it's just crazy. You I mean, wasn't popping off back. No, then. It's crazy because like when you think of it like that, it's like okay, the same position that you was in. Okay, like you sold it. It's like boom, you could have literally did this. You could have did a literally took. Yo, listen. Money out. Uh, I need you. I need you to do me a favor. Save me. Save the younger version of me right now. Okay. And say somebody's watching this right yeah. now. That's in okay. a similar si okay. situation. Yeah. So don't tell me your, what I could have done. Don't tell your house. You could have basically did a home. You could have definitely done a home equity line of credit. Um, and basically what they would have done is they would have basically it would have been like cash. So they would have gave you like a, a cash like an equity line of credit based upon like the value of your home. And you just been able to use that cash as money for your investment back from your clover line marketing and getting stuff back up and running boom and then with the equity line of credit they only you're only paying interest on what you use not what you didn't use so it's not even like when you get a personal loan or if you get a loan a term loan a cash loan because you're getting all the cash you got to pay interest on, on whatever you get if it's an equity line of credit they might give you 100k but you only use 50k now you only pay interest on that 50k not the whole entire the whole entire line but it's good to know that it's available right and you could have like so we're having a line what that also means, depending on how much that line would have been, right, it could have meant that you would have used some to invest in your business, but then you also could have took part of that line and bought another investment property, right? M maybe a podcast studio. Or you yeah, you about to make me like, cry right now, bro. Yeah. I hope y'all paying attention. Yeah. But yeah, that's, 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 um, and that's, it goes back to like, when you talk about the community, when you talk about funding, when you talk about credit, that, that's something that none of us have really been taught, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that information you just gave me, that's, that's, on the side of if I would have, you know what I'm saying, got my business together. Right, right, you know right, 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 right. If I would have got, got the business together in terms of the business credit, right, it would have been different. Yep. The personal credit, yep. it would have been different. I would have had the line, personal credit, uh, personal credit, credit cards, yep. business credit cards. Business. I would have been lit. So with the clothing line, with the clothing business, would you like, so let I me mean, just ask him, would you talk about it right now? Would you ever start one back up? And if you did start one, or if you are starting one, what would you do differently? And what, where do you feel like the gap was at? Yeah. And let's say for people that's on the clothing, like, you know, let's talk about that, right? Because yeah. you ran a clothing line, it was successful. There's people watching this that might be in a successful clothing line. So yeah. where was the gap? Well, what happened? And then where was the gap that you would have well, filled? If well, marketing we had on point. Supply chain we had on point. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, seeding, branding, we had all that. Uh, okay. on point so what we would have did well i would have done differently i would have had a mentor okay so shout out to the real test so i probably would have rocked with Tez. or i would okay. rock with Tez if i was gonna do it over got you you know what i'm saying um uh, because he he got the blueprint got you for clothing got right you. so i would i would rock with a mentor okay i would get the business credit set up for the llc got you right 
Okay. So, I, so now I have capital. Yeah. I can move. I got motion. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then I would use digital products as well. Okay. You know? Um, I would just put myself in a whole better position. And then I would, you know, so and I would have no digital products back then. It wasn't no passive income. Bro, back. what you mean? Yeah. Listen. No digital. Nah. Bro, listen. Everything was was hand to hand. You know what I'm saying? Now we did sell the big box re, 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 uh, retailers and, and some small retailers. Gotcha. We did have products in Paris and in Japan and gotcha. in Korea and in Australia. Right. You know what I'm saying? We did have Chris Brown and the Wiz Khalifas and the Weekend. Okay. And, and all these people weren't wearing the brand. We was on ESPN. We was in video games. You know okay. what I'm saying? We was doing all that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's marketing. That's dope. That's dope. Hundred percent. Yeah. We didn't have the other side, so we was making money, but then spending the money. System. And so then I sold my house to get more money, so we could keep things moving. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So if I was doing it differently, I mean, bro, I would I would have uh, an LLC just for the clothing company. Gotcha. I would start an LLC for the media company that goes along with the clothing company. Gotcha. Separate. And I would start a, and I would start a, another LLC for a publishing company. Gotcha. And oh, those will all be part of the same. Clothing company, business. so it's crazy with those three LOCs, though. I know, bro. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying. That's yeah. what I want y'all to understand. If I start a clothing company, those are the things I would be putting in place. But you know, another hack that I want to get an audience too is that with each LOC, that American Express will allow you to have up to ten charge cards, right? So you can have, so like you can have up to ten LOCs. You can have ten charge cards. Damn. So I could have thirty charge cards. Yeah. Well, could, I could have thirty well, if I have more, to do it ten, again. They say up to ten. You know what I mean, but what happens is. Even with the three, let's yeah. say you had three, let's say you had two charge cards yeah. with, and it's unlimited, right? I mean, well, that you would have built to an unlimited, you on three on three different LOCs. Yeah. Just imagine what you could have did just by building each. Uh, bro, I already know. Yeah, I understand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, we, we, so, so maybe, maybe I should talk a little closer yeah, company? Yeah, we, got, we, you know we bring it back. Can I be a part of this, this time? You I mean, yeah. House. Yeah, facts. Yeah, okay. Facts. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't want to sell the house. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want y'all to sell your house neither. Yeah. But, I, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of people spend more time on like thinking about the asset than actually building the business properly. Right. Same thing you were saying, thinking about everything else but not building the credit properly, yep. not building their business properly, yep. and not having business credit. But you know what happens is too is the end goal, right? I think like even when I started my journey, like nope, Just, my, my journey wasn't about ownership. Like I, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a business owner and yeah. yeah, I wanted to own my own thing, but I think like when you, I think what we talked about earlier, bro, and having a mindset of Johnson & Johnson, having a mindset of Balenciaga, like when you go into it that way, it, it, it lets you know that like it's, this is gonna be something big. This we got you gotta have a foundation to back yourself, but then you gotta have everything set up to build upon you from your foundation, right? And it's and, and like people go into it, it's just a side hustle, a couple extra dollars, right? And or it's just a hobby. And what, what like what's the statement, right? If you if you treat something like a hobby, it's gonna pay you like one. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? So yeah, bro, that's crazy. So all right, so we talked about the credit real quick. So, so um, give them give them a little breakdown of the funding piece. Okay. And then I want you know you gotta let them know where they can go to lock in with you. Got gotcha. you. So one of the biggest things I say about funding, uh, I you know I talked about it the mastermind. Right? Yo, give me a hundred k real quick, bro. What we gotta do? Hundred k real quick. That's what you gotta do. What number one? We talked about fixing credit. We gave them that game earlier. Yeah. So second thing that you want to do is understand like credit unions, right? For anybody watching this, you need to understand all the different credit unions that are out there that you can tap into. Um, if you don't know all the different credit unions. Another thing that you can do for different banks is called a bankbranchlocator.com. Bankbranchlocator.com will also give you all the different banks in different states and where you are so you can kind of get access to that as well. What you want to do, though, is understand what credit unions, your inquiry is going to be good anywhere from 30 to 60 days. So let's just say I go to PenFed, right? I go to PenFed. Right now with PenFed, you can actually do a personal loan application with PenFed. You can pre-qualify for this, right? Right on the website, PenFed. I don't want to say .com, but go to Google PenFed. You can go do an application for PenFed right now. But that inquiry that you do today, number one, you can pre-qualify pre for that. But let's say you get approved. If you get approved, that inquiry will be good for 30 days. So that means if you call back in three weeks or four weeks, as long as you do it within, within that 30-day time frame, you can get another credit card, another loan, another lending product. And if you know uh, who pulls from who, you can do this on multiple different reporting agencies. So PenFed, you know, they pull from Equifax, right? Find uh, Navy Federal does TransUnion. Figure out what credit unions pull from where. Understand that the inquiry is good for 30 days. So you can get multiple different lending products. And that should easily get you over 100000 if you just run that with, uh, uh, let's say, Navy Federal, PenFed, and you can do Apple Federal Credit Union, right? They, they pull from different ones and just understand it. Just understand the inquiry is good for 30 to 60 days. So that's a great fun and play. Make sure you go out there, run it, execute it. When you execute it, DM me on uh, SBS uh, underscore Mr. Brown on, uh, Mr. Brown on Instagram. 
And what we're going to basically do is make sure that you get access to a free class. I do a free class every single Sunday. So just DM me SBS. We'll get you access to the free class. And you can tap in and get all the funding plays. Learn how to get 50 to 250,000 in funding. Learn how you can clean your credit. And I'm also going to be showing you how you can get paid to remove negative items off your credit. So make sure you tap into the class uh, this Sunday, which today is Sunday. Yeah, today's Sunday. Yeah. And then I do one every single Sunday. So if you're looking at it, DM me on Instagram, SBS underscore Mr. Brown. DM me SBS. We'll get you access to the free class. And I do want to get something away for the, to the audience for free. Yo, word. What, what you got? Um, what's the name of this podcast, bro? Um, on the Blue Podcast. PRST. PRST. Yeah. What's that? Pursuit. Pursuit. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's not Brown, bro. We gotta change the last name. I got to. Yeah. yeah. So just text text PRST to uh, 240-301-1661. And what I'm going to do is give you access to uh, the secret lenders list. I'm going to give you free access to the secret lenders list. So just text PRST to 240-301-1661. And what can they do with that secret lenders list? Oh, yeah. You can get a bag with a secret lenders list. So basically, it's going to give you banks and who they pull from. So if I know mm. what bank pulls from a reporting agency, I can line up a sequence. And we basically teach people how to get 15 credit cards just on four inquiries. So that secret lenders list will get, basically give you the framework and the blueprint that you need to make it happen. Damn, that's crazy, bro. So, so yeah, the reason why my clothing company didn't work out is because you wasn't around, bro. That's your fault. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm around now. Let's make some money. So, yeah, tell them one more time where, where, where they can tap in with you. Uh, tap in with me on Instagram. Uh, S as in Sam, B as in boy, S as in Sam, underscore Mr. Brown. Uh, or you can text me directly. Text, if you're looking at this podcast, text PRST to 240-301-1661. And also, right, I want to give back up to Brendan, man. He's doing a lot of great things, and I just want to give a shout out to him, man, because a lot of times just in our community, we see people having emotion, we see people doing things, and you got to not only invest in to yourself, but invest in people, right? So I'm blessed that I could invest, right, with you and be able to do business with you and just excited for what we're going to do in the future, bro. So just want to kind of shout out to you and everything. Yo, bring me to Baltimore, bro. What's up? Yeah, let's you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, not Baltimore, Let's bro. do a live class or something. You said not Baltimore? Yeah, that's... All right, so bring me to LA. Yo, bring me to DC. Can we LA. do it in DC? Or is it, I, I've never been to Boston. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm in Boston. Yeah, we can meet Tatum. So we're not going to Baltimore? Tatum, Tatum and Jalen Brown, they just, you know, he just signed a 440 million crazy, contract. It's a, it's a crazy deal, bro. Yeah, yeah. A crazy. You, you might need to go back, bro. All right, man. Listen, <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for locking in. Listen, y'all, make sure you guys uh, subscribe to the podcast, follow my guy, uh, get that free gift, get that secret lenders list, and sign up for our free class. You do not want to miss that. Matter of fact, I might be in one of those free classes, so make sure you wave at your boy. This has been another episode of the On The Pursuit Podcast. We'll see you guys next time.